The Sailor's Whisk. In today's little project, what we're going to do is we're going to create the Sailor's Whisk. And as you can see here, I've got a Sailor's Whisk and basically the whole idea of it, it's either a crumb sweeper or if you wanted to, you could use it to scour pots and pans because it's a fairly rough cordage to use. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to make this Sailor's Whisk and starting at the top here, we're going to um, do a three strand plait, take it down into a diamond knot or a foot rot, rot, foot rot, there's no foot rot in this, a foot rope knot and then eventually where our cords come out we're going to basically tease all the fibres apart and make ourselves a nice little brush on the end of it. And so here we have it, this is going to be our little project today so let's get knotting and let's start making the sailor's whisk. Okay, see you in a bit. At the end of this video, I'll tell you what lengths of rope I used. I didn't use too much. Well, three, three shortish strands makes one long strand really, doesn't it? But I'll tell you exactly how much I used at the end of this. Um, and what I've done is, I have basically, I have centered my rope like so centered it like so and then off center a little bit further down I have tied it off with a constrictor knot because on our handle here we're going to create our handle here and I thought the easiest thing to tie was just a braid a three strand plate or plait as you call it that you would do for your sister your mum your boyfriend whatever you know and that's what we're going to do now so don't and if you don't know how to tie the constrictor knot that knot will also be at the end of the video for you to look up and to be honest the constrictor knot is one of those knots you're going to use all the time so look it up learn it and it's to do the simple plait all we do is we separate our three strands so that we have a left a middle and a right and all i'm going to do is i usually start off on the left i pass the left one over the middle and then just pull it up tight like so and then I take the right hand one and pass it over the middle like so I then go to the left hand pass it over the middle and I'm just going to keep doing that until what I'm, what my, I'm going to do is create a loop somewhere at this point here with a plait in that end there to actually make it into a handle like so. So I'll just go ahead and I will do that. So let's undo that again. So it's left over the middle and you want to pull it up fairly tight because we want a nice tight firm handle as we're doing it. And then we take the right hand one over the middle again. Left hand one is over the middle. Very simple, very easy one to tie this. And all we're doing is working from left over the middle, right over the middle. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to seize that off and just straighten it out a bit and we've got a nice plait in there which when we fold it like that is going to be the handle of our sailor's whisk. So I'll just go ahead and tie that off with a constrictor knot. So that's the first bit done. So as you can see I've put a nice plait around here. I've now got myself a nice handle to get hold of. I can also hang it from a hook and so we'll go on to the next bit of our sailor's whisk and as you can see it's nicely tied off down here with my constrictor knot. So that's two constrictor knot, one for the original cord and one for where I've doubled it up. And so the next thing we're going to do now is what we'll do is we will go on and I'm going to tie um, a diamond knot, a foot rope knot. People have different names for this knot, um, but basically it is a foot rope knot to such and where we crown, we crown it and wall it. Right, so what I've done is, there's my plait, just hold it up this way like so, spread out the um, six leads that are coming out of it, spread them out nice and evenly and what we're going to do now 
is we're going to crown it. And crowning is so simple. Basically, I'm going to take the one nearest me. doesn't matter which one you do first, but I'm taking the one nearest me because it's a bit easier. And I'm going to pass it over the one to the right-hand side of it. The one that I've just passed it over, I then pass over the one to the right of that. I then take the one there and pass it over the right of that. And then take the one there that's just been passed over and pass it over to the right of that. Then take this one here and bring it round and pass it over my final lead, which is there. And then this final one here, it has to go through our first loop, which is, that's our first loop there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tuck it down through our first loop and we then have it's all locked in place now. I can shake it about. It's not coming undone. And what I've basically done here is I have got my crown knot. So my crown knot is now in place. And just tidy it up slightly. So all of it there. And you see we've got a nice pleasing sort of circle coming up there like that. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie a wall knot. And basically a wall knot is a crown knot upside down. Or is it a crown and a wall? Anyway. A wall knot is an upside down crown and to make it easy for you, I always, I always struggle with this. If I try and do it this way up, I always struggle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically turn it over so it rests on the crown like so. Rests on the crown like so. Take my leads out and now what I'm going to do again is because I've turned it over, I'm crowning but I'm really walling if you see what I mean. But it doesn't matter. You, you're out here to make a sailor's whisk. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to once again grab the first one nearest me and pass it over this time to the left because it's spiraling. You can see there's a general spiral pattern in here so we want to follow that spiral pattern as we do it. So I'm taking the first one and passing it over the left one. We then take the next one and pass it over that one like so. Then we take that one and pass it over that one that one, pass it over that one, that one, pass it over the final one here, and then the final one goes down through my original loop there and pulls it up tight. And you can see here now, as I pull these up, it's forming a lovely shape underneath. There we go. Nice shape underneath. And... There we have it. We now have a crown knot with a wool knot underneath. Just pull that up a bit tighter. And we're now at the next stage of our knot. Right, so what we've got is we've got our crown knot, our wool knot underneath, and we've now got our, looks a bit spider leggery sticking out here. But the next thing that we want to do is at the bottom here, where these come out, you'll see there's a rope coming up from each one. And what we're going to do now is follow those ropes around. So in this particular case, I'm going to grab the first one and the rope is going up there like so. And so what I'm going to do is just follow that where that rope goes, just under one fold like so, follow it round and bring it through. And so you can see now, that is following that rope round. If I go round to the next one, here it comes out, and here's my rope that I want to follow through. So it's going to come up underneath those two there and just come out the other side. So bring it up like so, and bring it out through the side like so. So that's the next one done. If we go round to our next one here, we can see here now that that comes out here. So we're going to go up, round this, follow that one round through there like so. So let's just take that up, bring it round like so, and follow it through. There we go. And that's the next one done. We then have this one here. This one's coming up here, but we're going to follow the one above it through there. So let's just take that up underneath there 
and pull it through. There we go, we're nearly finished now. So here we go, this one here is coming out here, but there's one just above it, so we're gonna follow that, so we're going up to join it, and then follow it round and go under these two here because that's where it actually goes. And then bring it out like so. And you see here now, we're starting to get a nice crown effect being formed. Okay, and then we've got this one here. And if I look at this one here, let's see, where's that go? Um, that one, whoa, okay. This one here comes out there, but it wants to follow that one round. So basically I go up, follow it round through there like so, and then that should come out just there. And actually as I'm doing this, this is an old tarred rope and the tar is starting to smell where the warmth of my hands is getting onto it. Okay, and then that should be, let's have a look. We should have then our six legs coming out here and then gradually as we pull up on them we will then start forming a very nice pleasing knot so just pull them through pull your loose bits through like so just to tighten up on it a bit and you'll see then it'll bunch it up close it up and we start with a quite a nice pattern coming through so just go round pull it through like so, and we're starting to get a nice star appearing there. Right, so the next thing we want to do is, where these are coming out through the bottom here, now they're coming out through like so, so the next thing we basically want to do is, bring this one here, so bring this one here up, it wants to go round, following the one next to it, and down through the middle like so and so it comes out the other side of the knot there we go and we do exactly the same for the next one so the next one's coming out here but what we want to do is just follow that one round and then come up through the middle so bring it through like so and so basically all we're doing is doubling up underneath we then take the next one to it so this one here bring it round so that we follow this one down here. There's a lot of repetition going on, isn't there? And pass it through like so. That's it. And then the next one comes up here, but we wanna follow this one and then go down through the middle. Go down through the middle like so. Oh, I just lost it. Go down through the middle and then bring it out through the center. And then, is this the final one? No, two more to go. So this one comes out here. We're following that one. Bring it round and out. Oh, you can be rough with it because you're not gonna lose that shape. It's almost all locked in place. And then we've got the final lead here and the final lead here comes out there and it wants to follow that one round and then tuck down through the middle, like so. Tuck down, oh, just crossed it over there. Tuck down through the middle, and now you can see we've got, wow, this is quite a hefty knot on here, but you can see, but that will shrink down. I've got lots of slack in that, but you can see here now, we've got a very pleasing knot appearing, and it gives us something to get hold of as well. But what I'm gonna do next is, I'm gonna go around and tighten it all up and bring it in nice and close. So that'll be the next thing that we do on this. I'm having a cuppa now, hang on. Right, so what we've got here now is we've got, it's a misshapen diamond knot as such. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go around with my fid and I'm gonna pull out all the slack that's in our cordage. So basically, I'm following it round and pulling out any slack that I can find in my cords just to bring it up nice and tight. And then eventually you'll work your way round and it'll go through the middle. And so we just get on to the next one that we see, oh, there's one, there's a bit of slack there. So pull that up nice and tight and just gently go round, get rid of all that slack that's in there. 
like so. Whoop, oh, wrong one. Like so. And you will, sometimes you end up pulling on the wrong one, but don't worry about it. Just every time you see a bit of slack, get rid of that slack. Um, and you can see here gradually, as I'm doing it, the size is getting smaller. Oh, that one should come through there. And gently bring it around. And so just work your way around your knot and keep doing it until you get it nice. And we want this really tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around a bit more and tighten it. And then I'll come back to you in a second on that one. All right, so as you see, I've got a nice, pleasing diamond shape starting to appear here now. And when I get hold of it, it's really, really quite tight. It actually, I had it in the back garden and I was hanging from it at one stage. And I do weigh quite a bit. And then you can also beat it a bit with a hammer or a mallet just to make it a little bit more pliable to pull it up tight so we end up with a nice diamond shape in our knot here. And just tease it into the right position and then we get this pleasing effect on here. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is I am going to, you see, I haven't got much cordage left after all that effort. So, you know, we've got that much left. Oh, you can't see that. That much plus that much. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna sort of trim this to length. And the idea is we want to trim it so that we've got a nice, fairly bristly brush on the end of it there. And then, well, let's get on and do it. It's the taking the courage of knowing where to cut it is the problem. That is the big issue. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start the cutting process and I'll come back to you in a second on that one. Right, I didn't have the courage to cut it yet. <laughs> you'll, you'll know why when you're doing it yourself. But basically, I've gotta make a decision. So I'm gonna cut it, say, at about that length there on all of them. So I'm gonna, there you go. You've watched me cut the first one, so there's no choice. And as you can see, if I had a Spyderco knife and they sent me one, I'd be able to do this a lot quicker. Okay, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and trim all the rest to that length there. And that length is just over the palm of my hand. Okay, so back in a second when I've trimmed it all. Right, so there you have it. There's my bits, I've cut them off, there's no return now. And so the next thing I've got to do is, on my whisk here, I'm going to unravel all these leads now. And so basically go through it all and unravel them all so we get, just get the fine threads um, sticking out. And then, eventually, we will have our sailor's whisk, which is used for cleaning tables, brushing the crumbs off, or even if it's a coarser one, coarser um, rope, we can use it for scrubbing pans, etc. So I will go ahead and I'll fray all those then. Right, so I've got this far. Oh, it's taken a long time, this one. You wouldn't believe how much time is spent off camera doing things. But you can see here now, I have separated this three strand cores and they're now their own individual cores as such. And the next thing I'm gonna have to do is go to each individual one of these and separate it out into its own separate strands so that we end up with a nice brush at the end there. So that is the next thing I'm going to do. So all I'm gonna do is basically untease these here. Basically untease it so that we get our separate fibers and gradually you can see as I'm, as I'm playing with the ends there, we're getting the brush effect just in that little section there. And I've got to do that all the way along on every single one. And there's no point in you watching me suffering. Just believe me, I'm suffering, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just tease apart all these strands here. Right, I won't lie to you, I've, spelled, <laughs> I've spent a long time teasing this apart. And it's not easy, but eventually every single cord here will be teased apart and then I've got the dog's brush here and what I'm basically doing is I am just going to um, brush it through to separate the parts even more. Now 
The other thing you can do as well, which works as well, is if it's still curly, you can actually dip it in hot water. Dip it in hot water for a while and then start brushing it through again and eventually we will end up with nice brush at the bottom here for our sailor's whisk. So, <laughs> I, I have spent a long time teasing all these fibres apart. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put it in some warm water and then I'm going to comb it out so that I end up with some nice straight fibres here. All right, so I've got to the stage now where I've been teasing it apart. I've been brushing it and what I've been used to brushing it is my dog's um, brush and just gently brush it through. You can make yourself one with um, a piece of wood and some nails just to go through. And all I'm doing is I'm brushing it, just keep brushing it so that it smooths out nicely. And you can see here, long spider's legs are being pulled out of it. But gradually, I am getting a nice brush on the end of my um, the length of whiskey. cordage that I used was, I used approximately five foot, just a little bit over five foot I think it was, in actual cord. And if I measure the diameter, quite often when making this you would use a thicker diameter than what I've used. Because I've used a thinner one, it's about half an inch. This cord is about half an inch, and so I've just used three half inch um, pieces of rope to create this. And from that, from that actual measurement of 60 inches, or 5 foot, I end up with 1 foot. So 5 foot becomes 1 foot when you actually turn it into something. And then it'll be even shorter when I've actually trimmed this to length itself. And so that's, that's the measurements that I used in creating this particular knot here. Okay, so once again, I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed it, please share it, and it would be great if you could actually subscribe as well. But most of all, please share it so others can watch it. And once again, thank you very much for watching.